The problem we have when we're trying to play scales in our solos is that it ends up giving us non chord tones on downbeats. And this is a problem because when we don't have the notes of the harmony we're playing over, when those notes don't fall on strong beats, it sounds to the listener like we're not playing over the changes, like we're playing wrong notes in the chord. One example of this, if we take a really simple example, would be using the C major scale. So say we're playing C major scale over a C major chord. If we're descending on that scale, starting on C, we get this. Now, if we have that eighth note line, we start on C as our downbeat, that's fine. B is our upbeat. A becomes our next downbeat. That could still work in a C6 context. We're okay. G becomes our upbeat. Now we have F, which is a really bad note to have on a downbeat over a major chord because it rubs up against that major third, that E note. And that half step difference doesn't sound good to the ear in this context. And then our note after that, after we play E as an upbeat, is another non chord tone, D. So the problem here is we have those non chord tones following on the wrong beat, per se. One solution to this, without getting into any other scale, is we could just shift everything by an eighth note, meaning we could start that descending major scale on the end of one. So instead of on the first beat, we go one, two, three, four, one, and two ending on that C. And then we're fine. Then everything lines up. We would get B, G, E, and then C on the next one. And that can work. But what if you actually want to start your pattern on C on a downbeat, like on a chord tone on a downbeat? Well, this is one solution for that. And that is what the whole bebop scale pattern solves. That is the problem bebop scale solves. And I think about it more as a pattern and not so much a, a scale in the same way um, major scales or minor scales, because the bebop scale is really solving this issue of adding in a chromatic note so that our chord tones fall on strong beats. To me, that's, that's the essence here of what bebop scale allows us to do. So in this lesson, I'm going to go through it on guitar specifically. I'm going to show you how it relates to all of the picking that I've talked about in the past, how it fits on guitar. The PDF below is a free PDF that will give you the patterns for all five positions. There are different kinds of bebop scales. We're going to look at what's called the dominant bebop scale. So bebop scale applied to a dominant seven chord. And in future lessons, I'll go through other types of bebop scales, but this is just covering dominant bebop scale right off the bat is adding in a note between the root and the flat seven. And so that gives us this pattern. So we have C, B, B flat, A, G, F, E, D, C. And now because we have an eight note scale, we can separate it with our picking into two groups of four. So four notes on one string, four notes on another string, four, 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 four. In this orientation, we're going to have the four notes First is C, B, B flat, A. And then on the next string, we will do G, F, E, D. You could also do it ascending. Again, for this, we're gonna just focus on the descending just to keep everything the same. Now, when we do this, we might also wanna play these as double time licks or just continue the pattern. That's the other benefit of using a bebop scale is that we can do this in two octaves. And because it's symmetrical with four and four and it continues eight notes, we always line up within a measure of four beats, we can continue the pattern in two octaves. So when we do that, we get something that sounds like this. As you can see, really moves us out of a single position really quickly. Sometimes though, we want to stay in position. So the solution here is to use pull offs. We've seen pull offs before in ways of saving our right hand picking but it also can prevent us from having to shift position. So it has both of those benefits. So for this next example, I'm gonna use shape number one, which is this C dominant. If you guys have the master arpeggios book, volume one, you can check this out on page 60 and 61 for C dominant. You'll see these same patterns there, the same shapes for C7. And so these would apply also over C7 in that context. So I'm looking at this shape. And now if I don't want to descend position, I can start with my first finger here on C. One, 
four notes. And then right here, I'm going to have three. Because I had one at the beginning, I need to make it up with a three so that it's back to an even grouping. And then that's going to be my pull off, the F E D. That pull off will keep me in this position. Now on the next string, I can keep to the C, B, B flat, A, four notes. And then staying in position, I do another three note group with a pull off. And then I could end on C right there. So that pattern right there, we would have. So that is how we stay in position. What we can do is practice this with our arpeggios. And the way I recommend doing this is we descend in that position and then we ascend with arpeggios. And that lets us do a sort of continuous loop. It's like a three measure continuous loop. But again, you might be doing these as double time phrases as well. Um, let me do an example of that in a position and then the rest of the positions and shapes will be in the PDF, which you can download below. Again, that PDF is free. If you guys want to check out the Master Arpeggios book that goes along with all of these concepts, you can get that below. So to demonstrate this continuous loop, let's stay in this same shape number one, this position around the eighth fret. We descend the bebop scale. And then we're going to ascend an arpeggio starting on E. E, G, B flat, D. You can think about this like an E half diminished chord. And then we repeat E, G, B flat, D, ending one note above our starting note. The whole pattern would be this. Okay, the final point here is that when we're going into these other positions, we don't necessarily have to start our dominant bebop scale on the root C. When we start on other chord tones, because we're always alternating chord tone and then a note from the scale or a chromatic passing tone, chord tone and non-chord tone, let's call it, we can start on any chord tone on a downbeat and we'll always keep that alternating pattern. So let's take another example just to finish this up. So if we wanna start this pattern on the third of our dominant chord, we could do it here on that E, and that bebop pattern would look like this for the bebop scale first, starting on E. And then when we ascend, we're going to go up our G minor seven arpeggio. And as you can see, you get a slightly different result. The, the fundamental thing is still the same of starting on a chord tone, descending through that bebop scale, and then ascending in an arpeggio that ends one note higher than the note we were starting with. All of that is in the PDF below. In future lessons, we're going to get into how to use these bebop scales with enclosures. So keep a lookout for that. In the meantime, you can check out any of these videos right here for some more content. Thanks to everyone that's been supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Please like this video before you go and subscribe if you haven't. Share it with a friend and let's spread the word about this channel so I can get you guys more great guitar content. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.